the thrill of travel, wild adventure and big machines on this episode of Mavericks Unlimited. In the rough seas on the South African coast, whatever the weather, diamond hunters risk their lives for a big find that will enable them to live a different life. In addition, life with hundreds of scorpions or a polar bear. These men foster very special relationships to the wild animals that live with them. And extreme slackliners. At dizzying heights, they balance above an abyss with nothing but a small, thin belt under their feet. All this now on Mavericks Unlimited. We're on the South African West Coast. Gary Cohen lives here. He's an adventurer who wants to strike it lucky, and he's one of the last of his kind. I'd like to find a good spot. I'd like to find some good diamonds in places where people have never been before. Gary is prepared to risk his life for this dream. He aims to find the most expensive gems in the world. Ocean diamonds are more valuable than any other type of diamond. Gary is searching for a treasure which only he realizes is there. The rocks come falling down on you, you know? Does he think the risk is worth it? I don't know, I heard the other day they got 115 or 110 carats or something, no. Gary dreams of making such a find. Diamond diving is only something for adventurers. There's no books written on how to do this job or anything. Something totally unconventional. It's quite exciting. You get to go to places where people have never been for any reason. The large diamond companies are also looking for treasure in the ocean. However, the company's diamond ships cannot operate near the coast. This is a chance for adventurers like Gary. The hunt for diamonds means being alone on the high seas. Some people don't like it here. I'm, I, I find it an honor to be able to, to make a living in, in the wild place. You know? And to become rich in the process, just like other diamond divers before him. Gary has a unique ability. He can read the ocean. Nice wave action here that concentrates gravel around this corner here. Then you'll watch how the waves are breaking and where the rip currents are working. And then, of course, you need to swim the area and see how it's deposited. The sea only appears calm at first glance. High waves and strong currents hinder Gary's work. And this swell's just going to fuck us up underneath him. Check these swells running through here. Gary can only use his suction equipment when the waves are less than two meters. Anyone too impatient is punished by the sea. Not the only wreck on the Diamond Coast. The hope of quick riches constantly attracts new adventurers. Gary paid a lot for the mining rights to this area, but he is not the only one. His competitors are trying to drive him out of the area but Gary doesn't let that intimidate him. Yeah, there's a bit of a, a bit of a turf war going on here at the moment. I'm a happy guy. I don't need to fight with people, you know. But don't fuck with me. The next morning, the waves have eased off, but the current drives the boat towards the coast. The men have to drop all four anchors, and the competition has arrived. There are only about 50 days a year when the ocean is calm enough for the men to mine diamonds. Then the race against time begins. In the shortest possible amount of time, Gary has to suck as much water, sand, and shingle to the surface as possible in the hope of finding some diamonds amongst them. 
The water is 10 degrees. Therefore, Gary is wearing three neoprene wetsuits on top of each other. This is my job, eh? I'd rather be surfing. Gary will stay at his diving station for two hours. He needs to stay very focused as the risk of injury is high. A few months ago, a diamond diver on the coast died as a result of falling rocks. The hose is connected to a massive pump on board ship. Enormous suction is needed to suck the shingle to the surface. Gary plows up the seabed. Poor vision and strong currents make this job so dangerous. He could get trapped under a boulder. The suction of the hose is so strong that Gary repeatedly nearly loses a finger. only linked via his breathing tube. If he pulls on it, it's a sign that his colleagues should turn off the suction engine. Safety gloves only last a day. The air for the divers is produced by a compressor on board the boat. It's easier to work with a breathing tube than with a heavy air tank. Other diamond divers work with underwater pneumatic hammers. However, Gary only puts his trust in his own muscle power and a crowbar. Due to buoyancy, the massive boulders are much lighter than on the surface. Nevertheless, this physical work demands everything from Gary. A few years ago, Gary experienced his biggest success to date. He found a diamond valued at over $100,000. During the first selection process, all stones more than a centimetre in diameter are filtered out and thrown overboard. Very large diamonds are rare on this section of the coast. That's why one of the men monitors the drum. If he should see a diamond, production would be stopped immediately. But that has never happened. The first exhausting diving shift of the day is over. Gary will dive again later. The conditions have gotten worse. In the bottom of the this is the earth then. How far do you see? About that far. Five days later, and Gary is at home. A tiny place next to the Atlantic Ocean. The diamond divers who have struck it lucky have moved away. Gary also wants to leave this dusty village. With his next large find, Gary wants to fulfill another lifelong dream. He wants to build his own yacht and sail around the world. What did he find in the ocean? Nothing. Find something there, you're very lucky. You find something here, you're quite lucky, and this is just a uh, normal size stones for the thing. Gary finds his first gem in the fine shingle. He's not allowed to make any mistakes. Diamonds have a special glint and their facets are different to other stones. Other stones seem to be dark brown. Diamonds have definite facets to them and you see by the color. So lucky. But this isn't the big find he had hoped for. There's been much better times than this one. Four, five, six. Millionaire overnight, I don't know about that. They become pretty rich overnight sometimes. Still true, it's very rare nowadays. You become immune to depression. We're just part of it. At least Gary's found 32 diamonds. Their value? About $10,000. Gary will keep on looking in the hopes of making a big discovery. We now leave South Africa and fly to Uttaradit in Thailand. 43-year-old Suang Kwangsri lives here with his small son, almost 200 kilometers north of Bangkok. Suang and his son 
have very special pets, currently over 500 black Thai scorpions. Despite this danger, he has created a rescue center in his house for hundreds of animals. Scorpions are part of the spider family. Swang sleeps right next to them. The scorpion lover doesn't fear touching them. He doesn't find being in the middle of a pit with them a problem. He used to hunt scorpions and sell them as a snack. Nowadays, this devout Buddhist is dedicated to protecting them. This is better karma. <laughs> In Thailand, scorpions are considered a delicacy and they're available on every street corner in Bangkok. A fried scorpion costs the equivalent of about $3. This is big business for countless street vendors. Even tourists are tempted to try this unusual snack. You eat the whole thing? Yeah, yeah. You want to try it too? Uh, oh, oh, shit! <laughs> it's horrible. It tastes like burnt chicken. <laughs> Swang's days of selling his own fried scorpions are now over. He earns less, but he's happier. However, his love of Thai scorpions doesn't protect the 43-year-old man from being stung, which happens several times a day. It's as painful as a bee sting, but Swang is immune against the poison. He simply sucks it out. To do this, he simply places the scorpion quickly into his mouth. Amazingly, it works. The scorpion calms down because it feels physical contact on all sides. This recreates the feeling of its natural hiding place in a rock crevice. Swang not only lives with these poisonous animals, but he's also fighting to preserve their habitat. The problem, countless forests are being cleared in order to create space for rice fields. Inexorably, diggers create new rice terraces in the hilly countryside. When these terraces are subsequently flooded, the scorpions living there die. Swang hopes to convince the workers. <laughs> อันนี้เรื่องห้องเรื่องนะเค้าไอ้มาเฮซอลละคดีบ้านนั้นเนอะแล้วก็มาเบิ่งว่ามันดูหนาอยู่ป่าแล้วก็มีพวกอดทนย
she really likes me and she gets very jealous of other people when they're around me. So I have to be very aware of that. Um, it's just a really great bond that the two of us have for one another. It's no surprise that Mark is an animal trainer for films. He bottle-fed Aggie and in the process gained her trust. Aggie already learnt as a baby that Mark protects her and she's safe with him. Today, this polar bear is a film star and even has her own Facebook page. She'll stand on her hind legs or lay down on command, the result of years of training. However, this relationship has its dangers. Up to two and a half meters long and weighing up to 300 kilos, polar bears are one of the most dangerous bears in the world. A single blow with the paw can kill. That's why his wife Dawn and assistant Kyle are there to ensure his safety. The most important rule... Dawn is the lady that you talk to instead of talking to me when we're with Aggie. And if she hears another person, especially another female, yell out there towards him, she develops an animosity towards you because you are not allowed to yell towards her man's direction. And we experience Aggie's jealousy close up. She's almost like in a needy mood, not necessarily a loving mood. Aggie doesn't like it at all that Mark talks to us. Yeah, she's not really relaxed. She's coming over to check you guys out. Mark tries to remain calm, but the situation is awkward. We live by Aggie's rules. She has her rules, and uh, we try not to push the rules too far. Relief. Aggie doesn't regard our camera team as a threat. Once again, she focuses her attention solely on Mark. They both think bathing is the best thing ever. Together, of course. But for Mark, this is particularly dangerous. You know, if she does take you down to the bottom, she doesn't know that. So she's just playing with you. You know, she can easily drown you. Quite simply, Mark and Aggie have a special relationship. From Canada, the journey continues to Italy. We are with the Gibbon team in the Italian Dolomites. There, slackliners Flo, Jordan and Helmar are looking for a suitable spot for a first ascent. Der Fels sieht gut aus von hier oben auf beiden Seiten und es ist einfach zum runterkommen. Wir können uns einfach abseilen und auf der Seite das Bandsystem anwenden. Their first goal to stretch a high line between two mountains is really something. To do this, they have to abseil down both cliffs so that they attach climbing anchors at points positioned preferably at the same height. They later want to stretch the line across the abyss using these anchors. Their equipment mainly consists of climbing equipment. Because if you want to high line, you need to be able to climb first. The young men organize the setup. Oh, yes, yes. The dangers are always an issue at such heights. Ja, eigentlich schon der Respekt vor der Höhe, weil jetzt wird es zum ersten Mal ernst und wir müssen halt ja über die Kante, wir müssen dem Material vertrauen und ja, da hat man schon erst mal wieder ein bisschen Angst. However, Helmar doesn't step over the edge just yet. Also für den Aufbau stört der Regen nichts, weil der ähm, tut das Equipment nicht schwächen oder sowas. Das ist überhaupt kein Problem. Nur der Fels wird nass und dadurch wird's rutschig. The young men don't take the risk and stop work. A little later, the sun comes out. Time to set up. We have gerade Flächen gefunden. We konnten jetzt drei Haken in den richtigen Abständen setzen, so wie wir es brauchen, um später Schlingen zu legen. Und um, ja, perfekt eigentlich. Perfectly positioned anchors are the most important thing at this type of height. The young men even go so far as removing any stony remnants from the holes by using a straw and toothbrush. 
Only then can the anchors be screwed in safely and tightly enough. Two of the anchors are used to support the main slack line, while the others support the backup line. Es ist alles einfach ja, super kompakt. Wir haben drei Haken gesetzt in guten Abständen, sodass wir es nachher gut mit einer Schlinge verbinden können, um so eine Art Kräftedreieck aufzubauen. This is exactly what lies ahead of Jason on the other side. He's still looking for a suitable rock where he can attach his anchors. Because only solid rock can securely hold the slackline construction later. Jordan works alone on the cliff. That's much more demanding and difficult. But he's the most experienced and oldest of the three. Also, bringen wir alles rüber und dann machen wir einfach fest und dann für heute fertig. Incidentally, slackliners don't need permission from the authorities. Highlining in the mountains is so rarely done that it's not regulated. Nevertheless, the three young highliners are meticulously careful about not making any mistakes, because at this height, a fall would be lethal without any safety harness. The next day, Flo explains his fascination with first ascents. Dass ich der erste bin, der vielleicht sowas macht und dass ich neue Sachen erkunden muss. Und vor allem ist aber auch, dass man was zusammen macht und was Schweres zusammen macht. But first of all, the line needs to be rigged. What's arduous on the ground is extremely hard work at a height of 300 meters. Also, wir schnicken jetzt und der, der gewinnt, darf als erstes die Highline begehen. Schnick, schnack, What's schnuck. special, whoever goes on the line first is allowed to name the spot. Yeah. Ja, also. Ich freue mich ziemlich, weil ähm, das ist eine ziemlich krasse Line. Die ist ja ziemlich hoch, ziemlich lang. Und äh, ich habe noch nicht so viele Erstbegehungen. Und es wird ein ziemlich cooler Moment, glaube ich, wenn ich die geschafft habe. Flo, the winner, is allowed to cross first. But that also means that he has to painstakingly cross over to the other side, hand over hand, in order to connect the backup line with the slack line. Again and again, every few centimeters along. If the two lines stayed unconnected next to each other, it would interfere too much when walking. Flo would only be able to focus with difficulty and thus would hardly be able to safely take any steps. His strategy for the first ascent. Also ich schaue ans Ende von der Line und der Rest sollte von selber klappen. Für arg viel mehr kann ich nicht achten. Ja, ich habe ziemlich arg, äh, bin ziemlich arg aufgeregt. Habe auch ein bisschen Angst und bin jetzt ziemlich gespannt, wie es läuft. About 35 meters lie ahead of the 20-year-old. A last safety check, a deep breath, and then he starts. However, Flo slips when standing up. Nevertheless, nothing can really happen to the highliner. The reason, the sophisticated safety system. On each side, the young men have set up three anchors, which are used to attach the slack line and the backup line independently from each other. After taping the lines together, the high line is doubly secured to the carabiners. Flo now needs to find the necessary composure. On the one hand, he's extremely concentrated. On the other, he's extremely tense and nervous. Flo manages the start. He's about one third of the way. Over halfway. The last few meters take the longest. Flo stops time and time again to balance on one leg. First ascent is perfect. Flo reaches the end of the line, pumped up with adrenaline and endorphins. 
Ja, äh, ist wohl die Droge, die man braucht oder die ich brauche. Ja, mir geht's ziemlich gut jetzt. Ich bin zufrieden. Ich könnte jetzt ab morgen nach Hause gehen. Das ist perfekt einfach. His friends think so too. Completely liberated and without fear, it's now Jordan and Helmar's turns. They let off steam on what Flo has called the stretch spot. Once you've managed to overcome your fear of the height, all types of tricks are possible up here. And as a final act, Flo lets his safety harness catch his fall. Mavericks Unlimited.